Hey guys, Anthony, 4 before Diesel. This video is going to have a heap of awesome information like usual, but the main focus is going to be to do with transmission operation and the torque converter, how that works, and so basically how to look after your transmission and how, more to the point, how to look after the transmission oil. So first thing I'd like to um, just show you there, you can see on the dash, you can see park, reverse, neutral, drive, or we'll call that drive or fifth, fourth, third, second, and first, or low, whatever you want to call it. So first, second, third, fourth, fifth. Okay, so we're going to go through the basics here. Um, and just have a look at the gear changes and a lot of people get this and it's all you know this is kind of like you know maybe you know all this but there's a lot of people that don't and just I suppose takes a little bit more thought have a think about it to understand it's pretty simple stuff now I'm going to use some of the not quite right terms but we're going to call it the gears right you know so you've got a manual gearbox with a clutch or you've got an automatic transmission we'll say it's still got gears if you like so this is a five-speed auto and we'll call it an automatic clutch. That's your torque converter, but we're gonna call it an automatic clutch a little bit as well, just to try and make it a bit more simple for people to get their head around it, right? So the clutch happens automatically, okay? And the gear changes happen automatically, but obviously you can hold them back. There's a certain point where you can get torque converter lock on these transmissions. This is a 120 Prado, A750F, right? Five speed auto. It gets torque converter lock in both fourth and fifth now we're just going to get going and go through the gears and want you to take notice of the speed and the revs okay so the revs that's what this is this is the taco right shows you the rpm and you'll see it go up and you'll see it drop down when it drops down that's when it's basically going to the next gear so what we'll do we'll get going we'll put it in we'll put it in fifth for now actually we'll just leave it in drive so we'll get moving obviously that's in first it's already gone to second do you see it drop we're just accelerating pretty lightly. It's just gone for third. Did you see the revs drop? The torque converter isn't locked. That's fourth now. You can see the revs as it is. The torque converter is not locked because we're still accelerating fairly lightly. But if we back off, actually I'll do one other thing. I'll put it in fourth. So we keep it in fourth. Now we've got torque converter locked. Did you see it drop down a little bit? That's the torque converter lock there. Now, if we accelerate, in this one we have to accelerate quite hard. You can look at the load and see what I'm doing. It still hasn't unlocked, right? This is what I'm saying about the damn 1KDs. Look at it. I, I haven't even been able to get the torque converter to unlock when we've hit the speed limit. So, you have to bear with me with my camera contraption. I wasn't sure how well it was going to work. <laughs> and it's a bit wobbly all over the joint. So, anyway, it's all good. It's doing the job. So, we'll go for fifth what we can do you saw the revs drop down so that's fifth gear and did you see it drop again that's fifth gear converter lock so we're on about 1700 revs what I'm going to do now is accelerate lightly and what you're going to see it's going to you can watch the load see the load it's on 60 on the scan gauge there if, it, if the camera would stay still sorry about that there's nothing I can do I haven't come up with a better system yet but anyway hopefully this will do the job um, if I accelerate hard enough you'll see the revs come up a little bit Nah, see what I mean? It's already gone over the speed limit. This is what I'm talking about, how good the 1KDs are in these five speeds. You can accelerate and it just picks up speed rather than unlocking the torque, torque converter. I'm going to do another video in the 1GD with a six speed auto and you can just have a look at the difference. You've just got to breathe on the accelerator and you've got the torque converter unlocked in sixth and also for that matter fifth. Um, the only way to sort of have a hope to keep it locked is to be back in fourth. So let's just turn off the side here. Not that this is a busy road, but it'll be even less busy once we get down here. So okay. So again, just accelerating. You can take a guess what gear. I'd, I'd guess that's probably in third. Right, you watch your fight accelerate, and we'll see the revs go up. But I back off and the revs, well, let's change gears then, okay? So it's gone for fourth, but you watch as I accelerate and back off. See how the revs vary? That's a torque converter that's slipping, right? You can speed up and down. What I'll do, I'll hold it back in. Probably be better, actually, if we hold it back in third. We can do this here. So we're going to go 
that back for third, right? As I accelerate, of course the revs go up, but see how fast it goes up? I'm gonna back it off how fast it, it's not locked. That's your torque converter slipping, right? Now, something else you got in the view here is the engine coolant temperature at the, on the scan gauge at the top left, which is 84, and the, uh, the transmission temperature, sorry, is on the top right, which is about 66 degrees. Now, the vehicle, it's well and truly been up to operating temperature for a while, and what you got here is that transmission has been run through the cooling system. The radiator has got its own tank in there, and that's trying to warm it up to the normal operating temperature. And what you've got fighting that is the transmission's got a thin tin pan on the bottom and the air's blowing over that cooling it down. So they're the two that are fighting each other. And depending on your ambient temperature, what temperature it's gonna be at. But I'd suggest around 80 degrees is normal and it can go 10 to 20 degrees either side of that and be okay. You don't wanna be running around too cold, but you don't wanna be hot either. Okay, so you've seen how hard it is to um, get the torque converter to unlock on this so that's a good example already but we should be able to do it here it's a slide uphill so I'm into it now that's gone back to fourth okay so let's push it a bit harder uh, no that was torque converter unlock sorry so this is what you've got to take into account you've got torque converter unlocking and you've got the gear changing out so that's fifth gear converter lock there's not a lot we can do here actually obviously because you know we've got a problem we got here is um, you know 100k speed limit so we've got to keep slowing down to be able to um, show you what I mean so a couple of points the torque converter stays locked really well we've got a hill around the corner here so we'll turn up there and hopefully we can uh, show you what's going on there just trying to stay out of the picture a bit you know that's not always going to work out So, we'll just pull over here for a sec, let this guy past. Pretty quiet road, but we'll just let him go anyway. Alright, so, getting going, you can see fourth, sorry, first, fourth, second. Third, there's no converter lock in these gears, right? Actually, it'd be good to get up to speed and then show you how it unlocks on this hill. So I'm going to give it a bit of carry in a little bit, right? And we'll get we'll get the torque converter to lock in fifth if we can. Before now, a bit bit slow getting organised up. Well, that didn't work out because we're only on the hill. Yeah, not so good. I don't know if this is going to work out, guys. Look, hopefully it's helpful, but. It's not going to be that helpful because we've got we're up the top of a hill now and we're going back down again so let's just see what my point is if you want to look after your transmission is right now you've got torque converter lock in in fifth gear right so as you accelerate right there it is 1800 the revs are only going to go up with the speed, right? So that's the deal there. The torque converter's locked, so you've got no slipping there. The torque converter is what makes all your heat. There's two things that make heat. The first one is the transmission trying to get to normal operating temperature, okay? That's the transmission fluid running through the coolant system in the radiator in that tank. And then once it gets to that, the next thing making heat is your torque converter slipping. So Rather than driving along like this, this is probably not a good example. Maybe we need a trailer and some uphill work. And maybe this is why my transmission stays cool all the time. You can see it's only on 69 because the vehicle just does it so easy. The torque converter is locked. It all depends how you drive. If you're on a windy road or in stop start traffic and you're kind of like, like this all the time, you know, you're going to make heat and then you're on the brakes for the next bend like this, right? Let's do this for a bit. Let's burn up some fuel, right? And then, and just watch, you know, if you're constantly doing this, let's watch and see if the how much the transmission temp goes up in a few of these little cycles. And then you get going again, and then we're gonna slow down again. See, it's already hit 70, you watch how far. We're gonna slow down all this stop, start, aggressive driving, right? Okay, let's get going again. Okay, 
Yeah, so, I mean, not a great example. We're going downhill, but you see it's hit over 72 degrees in a matter of two accelerations, and we could have driven it harder than that, of course. Okay, so, the point I'm trying to make, keep your torque converter locked. Now, one of the best ways to do that, now, we probably need a slower speed zone here to do this properly, but let's see how we go. Just come up to another intersection. We've got to uh, we've got to make a turn, and it looks like we're clear to go now. So we'll do that. Okay. So if you're driving along at speeds of let's use let's use 60 for an example, right? See how easy the torque converter unlocks when you come to a slide hill and then back to fourth, whatever. So you don't want to be doing that. You don't want to have be in fifth in a too high gear, and that's what it is. It's a too high gear for that speed. Now we're up to 80. I'd suggest this is bare minimum sort of speed that you'd even want to be in fifth gear. So it's gone into fifth. We've got converter lock. Look how low it's running. Nearly 15, 1600 revs at over 80 k's. Right? It's quite low. You don't need to be revving that low. You actually be get better economy with the, wait for the converter to lock with the converter locked in fourth there and then when you come to a hill lock I'm at a hill now you can't see where I'm actually so I'm into it you can look at the load on the left right I'm into it a little bit right you can see the loads up to 73 but see the speed we've hit the speed limit there's no the torque converter's not unlocking in this case we're not towing so we could quite easily just use fifth right and it's going to get converter lock see the revs are still quite low 1800 revs all right so the point is the slower you go and more so once you get into your 60 and 70 zones what's going to happen is that torque converter is always going to unlock more easily in fifth all right in fifth gear and therefore be creating heat because the torque converter is slipping right all right not a good example here we're sort of uh, let's get somewhere else where we can travel at slower speeds without upsetting anyone because I did want to get out on the sort of 100 zones to show you the actual transmission shifts for people to understand hopefully back to basics first second third fourth see how the gears drop when you put your foot down and the revs go like that that's generally a gear change but if you do it lightly the first one may not be a gear change it may be the torque converter unlocking generally right that's the whole point. So, we just had a bit of traffic at the moment at a roundabout. Not too many cars, but there's a few. So, we'll wait for those. Uh, a way to cool the transmission down, if it's been getting hot, is to just sit and let it idle, okay? The cooling effect of the the, the, it's obviously running through the coolant, so it's designed to warm it up and also cool it down. I've seen my transmission up at, you know, let's say 100 degrees at times, and only idling for around five minutes brings it back to that 85, the same as the uh, coolant. So it works quite well, you just let it sit there and idle. If you stop for a few minutes, you know, some people need to, uh, I don't know, go and take a leak or go and have a chat with someone or get a cold beer out of the fridge or whatever the case may be. You do that, it's going to cool down. If you're in windy roads where you've got to, you know, keep slowing down for bends, I suggest you use less fuel to get going again to the next bend and you'll use less brakes when you get to the next bend. And therefore, you're just going to save fuel, you're going to save temperature in your transmission and load and working everything else, you're just going to um, save a lot there. Right, so you can see here, once again in fifth, how low the revs are. Now this vehicle, because it's got good solid torque from a three litre engine, you can accelerate, right, I'm going to light, you can watch the load go up on the left at the bottom, right, you can see, and you look at the speed, I'm just lightly accelerating, and you watch the speed going up. No torque converter unlock. This is quite solid, right. Now I'm going to back off again. You can't do that to one GD, right? Not even in fifth of a six speed. It's definitely not in a six in sixth gear, right? It just unlocks. It's piddly, right? 
and when you come to the hills you can just notice without getting into it you notice the speed dropping off so what we're going to do demonstrate fourth gear how fourth gear torque converter lock and this is going to pull up hills even better because it's fourth but it's just a better rev range you want to aim for two to two and a half thousand revs is where you want to run your engine you don't want to run it around at 1400 i mean you can downhill whatever but there's such a thing as once you get down low when you're using the really low down torque now this is different for every engine but once you're getting down there it actually uses more fuel to maintain your speed than it does by giving it a few more revs get the air through the engine to help keep it cool okay this thing it's just hard to show you anything because it just does it so easy so what we're going to do we're going to do a comparison i'm not sure if i'm going to join a video from a 1gd 6 b to directly compare in one video with this one this one might go up on its own we'll do one separately or we might do them together or we might do another one at a later date with the two vehicles driven under similar conditions same roads and join the video to do a comparison but just I hope that's helped with to help people understand the transmission shifts the torque converter lock and of course um, that that slipping of the torque converter is what creates the heat this is what creates the heat okay once your base warm up from running it through the coolant takes place the only other thing that makes heat is that torque converter slipping right so I'll give you an example now right so we're driving along so we've already got torque converter lock in fourth so this is great economy there's your 60 zone it's on 1700 revs doesn't need fifth gear but if you go drive you watch it drop into fifth see too low see it's slight droning then people are complaining about oh what's that rattle vibration from the it's droning away too low as soon as you come to a hill see that see that rev movement there that is the torque converter unlocking fifth that's making heat guys you drive it around in we'll call it city traffic going to school and back or traffic you just at these sorts of speeds where you just kind of like you know and it's going like that and you know, you don't want that. You just want to go fourth, right? Get it locked. And I'm telling you now, you can accelerate. Look, I'm, so you want, look at the load. I'm into it. You watch the speed go up. Torque converter stays locked, right? So that's what saves you a lot of heat, which that's what saves your oil, and your oil saves your transmission. Now, all that being said, these transmissions are virtually bulletproof. We don't see any issues with them. So it's not something massively to worry about. If, but if you understand the operation a bit, it can help you, you know, awesome vehicles. And if you want to keep it, you know how I say last of the best? I really mean that with the 1KDs. They're an awesome engine and the transmission and drive line behind it. The whole vehicle, whether it's a 120 or a 150, some of the best vehicles ever built. Um, if you want to keep it, it's going to pay to understand the operation of the transmission be able to keep the oil cool because your oil is the lifeblood of the transmission to protect the transmission okay so I think that's about all I've got I hope this has also demonstrated this the torque the strength behind the 1kd to that how it helps keep speed on hills I definitely think it's a much better tow vehicle and tow engine than the 1gd the transmission shifts are certainly better they reflect the strength of the engine Otherwise, it wouldn't unlock, but you haven't seen that yet. That's coming in the next video. I can't guarantee when it's going to be. Let's just see what happens, whether I put this one up or whether we wait for the next one. I'm not sure what's going to happen. All right, guys. Thanks for being patient. I know it's taken a while getting around. It's, all, it's not always the right conditions. One day, I suppose, when I'm away on a trip and the roads are empty and I've got some time, I might try and do a better one for you, but... This is 90% good for now, and I hope that's helped. Once again, if you haven't already, subscribe, give us a thumbs up, and uh, share it around, help someone. Thanks for watching, see ya. All right, so now we've got the contraption set up in the 1GD 2019. So 11 years more technology and we'll show you what that's resulted in okay so we'll talk a little bit about the transmission shift still same deal with the torque converter and trying to keep it cool sort of thing so but this engine is fairly cold has been driven 
but not in the last couple of hours so we haven't got a scan gauge or similar arrangement obviously in the older car you can have something like that sitting there it kind of look you know the car's a bit older the whole thing's a little bit untidy if you know what i mean but when there's something a bit nice and new and clean you kind of don't want those sorts of things so there needs to be something a little bit more high tech be good if there was something up here on the dash you know that showed you these sorts of things and you didn't need to have add-ons but uh so six speed auto i can't remember what it's called it's called a something rather 60 i can't remember all the letters and numbers but anyway it doesn't matter it doesn't matter what it's called you can figure it out just if you've got one you just look on the uh, manufacturing plate and it'll tell you what transmission or transaxle codes and that and it'll be uh whatever it is i don't know it's a, it's a something with a 60 in it anyway i'm pretty sure so um the vehicle should obviously be a bit smoother and quieter it's 11 years newer um, six speed auto so just it's a bit harder to work out what gear it's in and because it's a six speed auto you can see you know the revs are all over the joint already so here we are we're in a this is around about a 60 zone I say around about to cover myself. No, it is actually, but it's it's a roadwork area at the moment and just constantly changing, so it's hard enough to keep track of. But the point is, the converters hardly ever lock, so you accelerate a little bit, you know, see the revs moving up and down because it's not actually locked. It's just, it doesn't know what it's doing because you're doing 60. Look, let, let's go, when you go across to sports mode, it, it all, it default goes to fourth. doesn't matter what speed you're at, all right? So now, We've probably got torque converter lock in fourth, I'm pretty sure. Nah, it's the revs are too low to even lock it, right? So you've got to get to a certain speed. Could be to do with the temperature actually, so to be fair, everything's cold, so the torque converter ain't gonna lock at the same temperature when it's curled. That'd be in the software setting. So let's just let's just put in drive. So it doesn't matter, I'll put in fourth, I'll put in drive doesn't make any difference because at the moment it's staying in whatever it wants or it's staying in fourth I think it might have gone fifth we're just gonna get down here a bit further into the hundred zone and and you can't see where we are so it doesn't matter 100 110 80 60 40 I'll deal with all that like usual you know the constantly changing speed limits that you have trouble keeping a track of um, I'll take care of that but what I'd like, a couple things, so it's all similar, it's all the same with a torque converter making heat, but with this vehicle, I have had temperature, you know, equipment connected to it, watching the transmission temperature, and where the other one's always, I'll say, without looking, the other one's always about 80, okay? That's a general thing, you know, cooler days, it'll be cooler, shorter drives, it doesn't get up to that, but generally, it's always around 80. This thing's always around 100, and I'll usually say, three digits above 100 not below the only time it's below is for the half an hour since it's been cold it's constantly slipping it's constantly changing gears and it's constantly working on warming up as fast as it can right so round around about so the problem you got is so let's just get going and see what happens. So what, oh, what, I haven't been counting gears. Similar kind of drive to what we did before, I suppose. So let's just get it, let's get it up. This is a hundred zone, so let's get it up there. And just see, so constant slipping at the moment. It's not, you don't even feel as smooth. It's not even going through the gears. See the revs, they're just kind of like up there. Then it's, it's changed gears, massive drop. I'd suggest a little bit too much in between the gears. That's probably fifth. Yep, and that's probably six. Then we'll probably get converter lock because we're at the right speed, etc. So that'd be converter lock, right? We're doing 100. Now, I'll just have to touch the accelerator. See how it's unlocked? You see the speed's not going up. Did you notice on the other car, I touch accelerator, the speed goes up, the converter doesn't unlock. This car, I just touch the accelerator enough and see it's unlocked. It's still unlocked. Notice we're still just sitting. Be a look, you know, I'll say over 100 with the speedos out, so we're doing under 100 thereabouts. But have you noticed it's still unlocked? The speed's not growing, okay? The speed's not going up, still unlocked, still unlocked. We're on a slight downhill now, so the speed's going to start going up. 
I'm going to back off. It was fairly flat ground, so you can see the converter was unlocked. Now the revs have dropped right down, right? So still not even locked, actually. See it bearing up now until I accelerate and get into it. Okay, we'll do that. Let's, ex let's, okay, so we've got converter lock at those stupidly low revs. Why would you want to be that low? Okay, so then we give it a little push to speed up to 100. Ah, converter's unlocked. Just the slightest little acceleration. And it's, if we drive in the slightest headwind or at this speed, or the slightest uphill, it's just going to sit there like that all day and you're not going to know what's happening. And that torque converter's slipping and it's going to absolutely cook that oil, okay? So these vehicles, and look, you can add a cooler. The cooler's kind of like a Band-Aid problem, a Band-Aid fix. It's going to cool the oil, but it's not really the cause of the problem. And then it's going to cool it. So it's what it's going to do is constantly cool the oil. You know what I mean? It's, so even if it's running cold, it's going to cool it. So that's where coolers aren't always necessarily, depending on your climate and if you're consistently towing or hot, hot weather. So let's get going here. The idea of this is we're in the 100 zone, so. So you can see it constantly slipping. Okay, now let's, we're up to speed. We, if we back off, we should be able to get torque converter lock because we're on flat ground. It's slightly undulating, but basically flat ground. Okay, that'd be talking about a lock there, right? We're on flat ground, going slightly downhill actually. Sort of pretty flat now. So again, I'm just cruising, I'm just maintaining speed with wind resistance at speed under 100 on flat ground. And let's say, oh, okay, I'm a bit under 100. I just want to speed up a little bit. I'm just going to lightly squeeze that accelerator and see if we can get, uh, see, not enough to just push it just to 100 that slowly and we've got the torque converter unlocked now let's leave our foot in that position there right flat ground still torque converter still unlocked did you notice the 1kd in the five speed it went as soon as it just wanted to lock it wanted to be locked even when we accelerated it wanted to be locked right this thing look at it sitting on the speed it just doesn't want to be locked look i'll give it a little push so you can see so the needle moving it's unlocked it's just sitting there slipping cooking your transmission Toyota, you guys need to redo the software on these things. That should be locked, okay? Now, let's give another example. So there's four, let's get fourth, right? That'll be converter lock and fourth. See it drop down that last little bit at the end. I know it's hard with my contraption, but you watch. Now I can accelerate a bit. Watch the needle go up. Yep, see the needle go? That's still locked in fourth, but we don't want to drive around at 2,600 revs at 100 k's. 20, 2,200 maybe. So in my opinion, the gearing's all wrong for the vehicle. The software's not right for the lockup. And if you drive the vehicle, you can feel it hasn't got the torque of the numbers they quote. The vehicle has not got it at your right foot. Otherwise, it would hold speed. The torque converter would stay locked or not, whatever. The vehicle would hold speed better, okay? This vehicle does not hold speed like the 1KD does, okay? So here we go, we're in fourth, let's get things boogieing. I mean it was in third anyway, but it's in fourth, but of course it'll go to a lower gear, okay? So here we are, we've hit 100, let's use the cruise control, right? We're gonna set it on 103, because we know that's maybe 100, you know, thereabouts. Okay, cruise control's on. We're going up a hill, let's go to drive. Pretty well starting to flatten out now, so you can see it drops down. What we'll do down the bottom of this, I think we'll turn around and come back up, because this isn't a big hill. We're going downhill now, but it's not much of a hill. It's a slight hill. It's a sort of hill that you 1KD, it's going to go up on cruise control, and the torque converter is going to stay locked in fifth. And if you had a trailer on and you're in fourth, you're going to have torque converter lock in fourth. Now. We're going to have torque converter lock here at the moment. We're slightly downhill, as I said. We need to be going back up the other way. Sorry about the, um, you know, the contraption. You know, it's the best I can do. I mean, look, at least you've got a good view of the revs and the speed. That was the idea of the uh, game, the contraption. Don't ask me about what it is, the contraption. <laughs> All that matters is I, my hands are free. I don't have to touch, and I can do push-pull steering. Bada bing. Whatever. So, about another minute will be towards the end of this bit of road where we can turn around, get back up to 
speed on cruise control and show you really how lousy the transmission look it doesn't matter if you're not if you're not into caring and understanding the transmission shifts and the torque converter along it doesn't matter you can just ignore it you know it's not really going to bother you but for people that understand it and I suppose it's just not good for the vehicle longevity and it might not be your problem because you're only going to have it however many years but there's the second owner and then there's the third owner etc and as the vehicle gets older as a second third or fourth owner they probably can't afford you know to put a transmission in it sort of thing and maybe these transmissions are that bulletproof it's just not going to matter perhaps that's the case but I'm not sure about that okay so we just pulled over here check both ways are all clear bit of push pull steering we're gonna pull the Yui and we're gonna give it the bearings oops sorry bump the contraption but that's all right all good now we're gonna give it the berries actually that's what we said we're gonna do there's the berries of a 1kd that's everything it's got and this is very light it's a GX there you go made it to the speed almost as quick as a 1kd would you get the feeling that I love the 1kd right so what we're doing cruise control where we right okay there it is okay so we're going up the slightest undulation Right. I wish I had something there to show you the load. See the torque converter's not locked? Is that locked or not? Let me use my right foot. No, see it's just sitting there. It's just sitting there, it's not locked, it is cooking. It's creating heat for you. Right. What I'm going to do to show you what would happen if it was torque converter, I'm going to go to fourth. Let's see if we can get it to lock, right? And then fifth. Right, now we might get lock in fifth. We might not too. That's all on arts. No, so if we touch accelerator lightly, the revs come up. It's not locked, right? We'll try and force sixth. No, not it doesn't even want to go there. Piddly and gutless. Do you know what I mean? It just wants to sit there, revving at it. You know, see the revs slowly coming up? The speed's not going up, just the revs. Because the torque converter's unlocked. The silly thing, you know, it's in fifth and the torque converter's slipping. Right, to get to get torque converter lock, we kind of got to go fourth. Bang, we got torque converter lock. There we are. So at 100 k's an hour, pretty close to 100 genuine, you'd have to be sitting at 2700 RPM. Okay, is that ridiculous or what? Anyway, that's what I wanted to show you. It's downhill now, so we're going to drive and you watch. We'll get torque converter lock pretty quick, just so you know where the revs are at. You know, down there somewhere, way down there. So you know, now it's we're back on flat ground, kind of. You know, if we kept going and got to the next undulation, the damn torque converter's gonna unlock again. I hope you get where I'm coming from, you know? It's not pick on one or the other, it's just what it is, and I just find it annoying. And I think everybody should understand the, the downside to, you know, a possible upgrade isn't an upgrade. It's, you know, the whole vehicle, I suppose, you could call an upgrade, it's an upgrade, but this is really a downgrade, okay? It's a downgrade if the transition shifts, the software's not right, and your transmission's constantly torque converter slipping, creating heat, okay? Now, as I said already, perhaps the engineers know these things are bulletproof and they're gonna last millions of kilometers, so it doesn't matter, but why would you make the torque converter slip all the time? So here we are, you know, I'll set the cruise control again, there you go. Because the torque converter, see, so we've got a slight downhill, so we've got the torque converter lock now. Slight downhill. As it flattens out here, let's see if it stays locked or not. It'll be interesting. Okay, it'll be very close. Flat ground, it's slightly downhill still, so we need a slight uphill. We might get it yet, I'll let you know. As I said, if I zoom out so you can see that, then you won't see what's going on the dash anyway. So that's why we've done what we've done. I don't know if this is really that helpful. I know it's probably gonna be a bit of a long video for the amount of information, but I think it's important information, A, about the torque converter, and about the transmission shifts, and about, 
Okay, so now we're on flat ground. And it's held locked, so that's good. So it's going to take a bigger hill. Let's do this, right? Let's slow it down to 100. And then let's pop it up to 105 and see if going to 105 unlocks the torque converter. There's 105. There it is, straight up over 2 grand. And I reckon, and then we'll drop it back to 103. Flat ground, so if we don't have it downhill to get the torque converter locked, we're just on flat ground. Oh no, there it goes, it's just getting locked on flat ground, but only just. Anyway, there you go, I'll say it bada bing, bada boom. Some people get it, some people don't. I hope that's helped. It's harder to pick the transmission shifts in the six speed auto behind the 1GD. You can have a look at it now if you like. We'll um, let this bloke go. We're not in a hurry. Seems like everyone else is, but okay. So here we go. Okay, I reckon that's second. We're into third. How do you pick it? You feel it, even though it's smooth. That was fourth, I said. That'll be fifth. And you know sixth is going to drop right down near 1500, and we're on downhill, so it's probably about to do it. Just thinking about it. It's on the edge. Somewhere between fifth and sixth going, what do I do? What do I do? I'll back off a bit, and we'll see what it does. Anyway. Yeah, I've got a back... Virtually, you see the speed drop down. I had to virtually take my foot off it to get it to want to go into sixth at 100. Now, the speed limit's 100 in most states, thereabouts. So, what's the point of having a sixth gear that it just will never find converter lock unless you're going downhill and you've got to back right off? Awesome. Anyway, it's just how it is. So, if you want to uh, go and buy a new car, go ahead. But if you don't like the transmission shifts, the software, and the fact that that torque converter, we're, and just so you know, we're downhill at the moment, slightly downhill, it's only slightly. Um, if I accelerate a bit, I reckon I could get the torque converter to unlock anyway, right? So it doesn't take much. See, there it goes, guys. In the other car, you push the accelerator, the speed goes up, right? Behind a 1KD, automatic. If you push the accelerator, the speed goes up, in a 1GD, if you put the accel push the accelerator, the revs go up. That's the difference. The big difference. Anyway, I hope that's been helpful. Hope you learn a little bit about the gear, the shifting, how to work out what gear it's in, when converter lock happens. I'll try and do a bit more on it another time with a better contraption. Um, hopefully you understand a bit about the differences in transmission shifts and the software and the converter lock between the A750F, the five speed that is behind the 1KD and the 1GD that's got the six speed. And that's all I can say really for now. Bada bing, bada boom.